Hey everyone, Nathan here from PH Studios and welcome back to another XNA video. And in this video we're going to cover clickable gameplay objects. Now we created this video a long time ago, but it was for XNA 3.0 I believe. Now I've upgraded it to 4.0 and I added a few additional features that some people will enjoy. And I'll go ahead and discuss those. Alright, so the basic idea is that we have a gameplay object in the screen and we want to be able to click it like a uh, your player. You want to move your player from one point of the screen to another one using your mouse. So how do we do that? We need to use the mouse states. And I've uh, encapsulated that into a brand new class. So I have a mouse state, previous state, and current state. And of course we have the mouse position and the texture we want to use and also the rectangle. And just like the previous, the uh, Space Shooter tutorial, the first sample I created, we used the uh, public bool for the uh, button presses. So just properties for button presses, so left click, new left click, left release, and then the same for right, the right button. Then we have the constructors, which just set up the texture. And then update and draw. So it's pretty much similar to the space shooter, uh, the way that the input system works on the first space shooter video. Uh, sample, I'm sorry. The first space shooter sample. That's, that's what the input system did on that sample. Alright, so we have a mouse object that we draw on the screen and we are able to determine if we have clicked the mouse or release the mouse on both the left button and right button. So that's the first thing we need to do is we need to use the mouse object that's built into the uh, XNA framework which is the mouse state and then we also need to make it a visual representation and also determine if it's a left click or right click or a new button press or a release. So now the next step is actually creating a clickable gameplay object class that'll handle everything for us. So what I did, similar to the previous one, the XNA 3.01, is we have an object clicked state. And then it's normal if we have not clicked it or anything like that. Uh, clicked, obviously we clicked the object and released when it was clicked and then we all of a sudden released our mouse. So it goes from normal to clicked to released to normal. Now it is a derivative of the gameplay object for version 2 and this is going to be actually version 2.1 because I did some modifications to this gameplay object. So we have a left state and a right state. We need individual states for the left button and the right button on the mouse. Uh, we need a way to store the active mouse. Then the construct that you've seen uh, before on all the gameplay objects. We just need to initialize the states to normal. And then all the events which are just virtual methods. So on left clicked, on held left click, on left release, and on left normal. And then same for right but we also have on hover and on leave. And we'll get into all those later on. So when we update this clickable gameplay object we call the base.update which calls the gameplay object update which updates our position, our rotation, all of our stuff our uh, rectangle, we need to recalculate the bounds by using the transform matrices and all that stuff is calculated in the base.update so we do not have to do anything on that now we calculate an intersect if it's true or false, if it intersects, and the reason we want to do it this way, if it's intersecting, if the rectangles are intersecting, we want to update our clickable gameplay object. However, there is some point where if it's intersecting, and then all of a sudden we move our mouse incredibly fast, it loses that focus. So it's still, the object states are still there, so it just causes issues. So not only do we need to check if it's intersecting, we also need to check if it's 
we the way we have it in the clickable gameplay object is if the active mouse is not null, it means that we have still a mouse that we need to interpret. If it is null, that means all of, all of our states are cleared, uh, the mouse is nowhere near the gameplay object, and we're just ready to manipulate the gameplay object like normal. However, if it is not null, we need to process the active mouse states and manipulate our gameplay object that way. So, if active mouse is not null, which means we still need to do work with the mouse, and the left state is not equal to normal, and the right state is not equal to normal, which means for some reason the mouse has lost the intersection, it's a loss of focus, however, we still have states we need to deal with. It's still, our right button is still held, so we need to deal with that state. And at that point, when everything is released, then we're cleared and everything will go back to normal. This will all be demonstrated at the end, so it'll be less confusing. So, not only do we need to check if it's intersection up here, but we need to check if it's down here so we can process the on hover. Alright, so now the normal processes that you can probably guess if it's left click and we need to check the state. So if we just click the left mouse button and if it's left state is normal or released, we need to process it saying it's clicked and we need to say on left click. So now if we left click it and its state is already clicked, we need to say, alright, we held it. We've held the left mouse button. So we process the on held left click method. Now if we release the left mouse button and it's clicked, we need to say uh, it's released and we need to call the on release. Now if it's not clicked and its status is released, then we need to set it to normal. And then the exact same thing for the right, the right button and right state. Okay, so all of this happens if it's intersected or we have states left we need to deal with. Otherwise, we need to set this up to where it tests active mouse is not equal to null. We need to set it to null and then we need to set it to on leave. So we have on hover and then the opposite of that is on leave. On leave focus or on leave. And of course, we need to update the gameplay object. And we can manipulate that based on our object we want to deal with. So that's part two. Part three is we need to create a derivative of gameplay, clickable gameplay object. And this is like the actual uh, previous tutorials where we have a gameplay object and then a player, which is a derivative of gameplay object. So we basically do the same thing here. And this is where we process the on hover, on leave, on left click, on held left click, on right click, on right release, and the update method. Okay, so for this sample, for the on hover, I just set the alpha to 100%, which means it's 100%, uh, the opacity is 100%. Uh, otherwise, it's 50%, so it'll be a little bit faded into the background until we hover over it. Then it will be 100% visible. Then we, when we leave it, when it's not, when the mouse is nowhere near the object anymore, it sets it back to 50%. Now when we click it, and when we held the click, we need to set the position up as the active mouse position. So when we click and hold, we can actually drag and move our gameplay object. Because we're using the position based on the active mouse's position. Now, when we right-click it, we want to switch the texture to a clicked texture. And when we release the right-click, we want to switch it back. Alright, so now if both states, both left state and right state, are normal, that means we have no button presses to deal with, we want to randomly adjust the position, so we want to randomly uh, just move randomly across the screen. So this gives us a better visual on what happens when there is no button presses to 
process, it'll just randomly move its position based on the uh, random object. All right, so let me press F5 and do a little demonstration. So we have no button presses to do with, so it's randomly moving across the screen. And uh, so when we hover over it, it'll not only set it to 100%, but it'll also rotate it. Now, when we left click it, hold, left click and hold, we can drag it and move it around. And when we right click it, we can switch it to a clicked texture. Now, I'm still holding down the left button, so if I let go of that and just hold the right button down, this is the issue I'm talking about. See, I'm still holding down the right button, but the mouse texture and the player are not intersecting. The mouse is far away from the texture, but the right mouse button is still held down, so we still need to process a button state. And when I hover over it, it does a rotation, and you can tell when it's on hover and on leave. But we still have a button press to process. So that's why we just can't check to see if it's intersecting, because things can cause an issue, as I'll demonstrate here. If we just have... If we just check the intersection point, let me go ahead and move this over. If we just check this, see the it faded back to 50%, and now we, let's go ahead and release the button. Nothing happens. It's just because we're checking the intersection points, but the states are, states got messed up because we're not intersecting anymore. So it still says that the right state is held, even though we're not even anywhere near the gameplay object anymore. So that's why we need to do this additional stuff here. So there you go. You can download the sample and play around with it. You can make another derivative of clickable gameplay object to make that like an enemy or something. But anyway, I've updated this to have an on hover event to where if you hover your mouse over it, something will happen. As uh, a member requested, I do that. And pretty much everything else is the same. You can drag and move it around, and if you right click it, it'll change the texture to a uh, clicked texture. Then you can hold both buttons down, and it'll process them exactly the same as you'd expect. I have both left and right mouse buttons down so I can both move it and it'll have a clicked texture. Alright, so that's it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, go ahead and play around with the sample and make some adjustments. Try to make it a little bit better if you want to. And uh, we can go from there. So this is what we actually use in the tower defense game, and I'm uh, people seem to love the networking tutorials, so I'm gonna go ahead and try something a little bit different for the tower defense game. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a website announcement just after this video, if my throat's a little bit better, that is. And uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to discuss the new format for the tower defense game. And I'm going to do it in a website announcement because I'm going to create one anyway. So I don't want to say it twice in this one and in that one. So if you want to know the status of the tower defense, go ahead and watch the next video I will upload, which is a website announcement. And you'll see what's going on with that new format that I'm going to do. I think everybody will enjoy it, so go ahead and watch it and I think you'll understand why it's going to be a better idea. So anyway, that's it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, go ahead and download the sample. I will provide a link in the description, both YouTube and my site. And uh, you can go ahead and download this and play around with it. I hope to see you next time, next weekend, for a either an artificial intelligence or a networking tutorial.